welcome to or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Katie, otherwise known as the Vintage Academic. I am a senior at UC Berkeley. I'm also a transfer student and I study anthropology and archaeology. In addition to being a full-time student, I am also the head of the transfer admissions office over at Accepted Consulting, which is a small transfer and graduate school admissions consulting business where we help transfer students and people applying to grad school get into their dream universities. So if you're watching this video as a future transfer student and you want help with your application, go ahead and check the link below to schedule a consultation with me and let's move on into the video. So today I have a Q&A for you guys answering your questions about the transfer process and how I personally got into UCLA and UC Berkeley. I posted both in the community tab here on YouTube for you guys to ask me your questions as well as a question sticker in my Instagram stories which I am very active on over there on Instagram so go ahead and follow me there to get in on future Q&As and also just you know have more frequent daily updates about my life as a transfer student plus some like really cool pictures of UC Berkeley's campus which is beautiful and gorgeous so anyways I'm going to go ahead and just jump in and get started with the questions the first one is actually about the application and it says what would you recommend putting in the additional comments on the UC tag application so if you don't know the tag or transfer admission guarantee application is an additional application you have to submit when you're doing the transfer admission guarantee process from a California community college to one of the UCs. When doing both the TAG and the UC application, there's a section called additional comments where you can leave additional information that you believe is pertinent to your application. This section is not meant for you to write an additional essay. Definitely do not look at it as an opportunity to do so because it will not be helpful to you. And in fact, it, it can be quite detrimental if admissions officers see you trying to utilize this space to write a fifth essay because in the UC PIQs, you get a chance to write four short essays. That is not what this section is for. Additional comments is meant for addressing anything that you find is really important and significant to your application that you weren't able to work into your essays. This should be relatively short explanatory information about like why you had to withdraw for a semester, why you got a bad grade, or any extenuating circumstances that you can explain succinctly. So in my case when I went to write my essays, I did not have, in the theme of my essays, I didn't really talk much about the fact that I had like withdrawn for multiple semesters or I just like didn't enroll in semesters as a whole throughout my community college education and why I got like a bad grade in one of my classes. So because I didn't talk about it in my essays, I used the additional comment section on my application to say, hey, I have a chronically ill family member and I withdrew from a couple of semesters in order to care for them. We also like weren't financially stable enough for me to be enrolled in college. And that is the reason why I did not take classes during XYZ semester and why maybe I failed a class. So it's really just there for you to explain any extenuating circumstances, any bad grades, any disruptions to your educational progression on your transcript that you didn't get the chance to explain in your essays. All right, moving on, the next question says, you talk a lot about the transfer process, but what happens after acceptance? So after you have submitted your application, the admissions board gets together and discusses your application and they decide to offer you admission to their university. The first thing that's going to happen is that you're going to receive some kind of notification that you've been accepted. This differs from school to school. Sometimes it's an email, sometimes you have to log into a portal, but either way they're going to send you some kind of notification that you've been accepted. After you've been accepted into all of these amazing universities that you apply to, the next thing that you have to do is make a decision, which is definitely way easier said than done. Making a decision on which university to transfer to can be a really big deal, especially because transfer students often have, again, extenuating circumstances that prevent them from just going off to any university that they want to go to. Like, me, for example, one of the reasons why I did choose UC Berkeley over UCLA was the location and its proximity to my mom's house because I do want to be close to my family because I have a chronically ill family member. And additionally, my fiance lives in Davis and I wanted to be close enough to be able to see him. Anyways, that was a bit of a tangent. So after you've made your decision, the next thing that you need to do is I think in the UC system, they call it your SIR, which is wow, the lighting just changed dramatically. I am sorry about that. To submit your statement 
of intent to register. This is essentially letting the universities know that you have accepted their offer of admission. You're saying, I want to go to your university and letting them know that you are in fact going to enroll to become a student at that university. After you've done that, you're probably gonna get like a ton of emails introducing you to the university's campus. Congratulations for deciding to go there. You're gonna get like information packets about orientation and so on and so forth. The next question is, what should transfers be aware of when getting their decisions? This is a really broad question that can be difficult to answer, but I'll do my best to answer it. Some things I think you should be aware of when getting your decisions back are the factors that are going to play into your decision on which university to attend, which if you want to know more about my decision making process, I'll leave a link to that in the description because I did talk about why I chose Berkeley over UCLA and all the other universities I got into, and that again includes things like its proximity to my mother's home, the department that I was going to be going into, access to research, so on and so forth. Another thing I think transfers should be aware of when getting their decisions back is that the transfer process can be difficult in terms of actually qualifying for transfer because of transfer units and units not transferring and major requirements and so on and so forth. With the California Community College to CSU or UC system, they have agreements where they say, like, oh, if you take these classes, you can get in, they will transfer. But it's not the same for all systems, and it's definitely not the same if you're going from a California community college to a private university or an out-of-state university. So that being said, sometimes you might get a decision back where they say they've accepted you, but then it turns out that some of your units don't transfer or you have to retake a class. It's not super common, again, in the California system, but it can happen elsewhere. Another thing transfers should know about their decisions is that you're going to get a lot of emails and it's going to be very overwhelming. I got a ton of emails from all of the universities I applied to, mostly them saying, hey, pick us, pick our school, come and see why we're amazing. Um, and it was super overwhelming. And one of the things that I tried to take into consideration when going through this deci getting decisions back process was whether or not it seemed like the universities cared about transfer students and whether or not they had support for transfer students. So I think that's another thing to keep an eye on. The next question is what will schools want from us after getting accepted, like in terms of paperwork, etc. So like I already said, once you get your decision back, you're going to have to submit your statement of intent to register or essentially accepting your admissions offer. The next thing that you should be aware of is the fact that these universities are going to ask for all of your paperwork, like all of your transcripts. If you're in the California Community College system, they're going to want your IGETSI certificate, which is the intersegmental general education transfer curriculum to ensure that you have taken the courses that are required for transfer. They're going to want your community college transcript to prove that you actually took the classes that you said you did and to verify the grades that you got. And that's not just downloading your unofficial transcript and uploading it. You actually have to go to your community college like registrar or like admissions records or whatever it is and tell them that you need them to send the university an official transcript of your grades. I don't know if it's the same for all systems, but in the California Community College to UC system, they're also going to want your high school transcript. Now, don't freak out. I know a lot of community college students go to community college because they got bad grades in high school. I'm one of them. They are not looking at your high school transcript in terms of grades to determine whether or not they actually want you as a student because they've already accepted you. They've already offered you admission. The reason why they're asking for your high school transcript is to ensure that you have actually graduated high school or that you have like the high school diploma or a GED or an equivalent thereof because it is a requirement which personally I don't think it should be a requirement because I think that actually limits access to higher education. Some people dropped out of high school, never got their GED, and then went to community college, so I actually that's a different story. I just, I don't like that part, but be aware that it is something that they might ask from you. You're also going to want to fill out your FAFSA, which is the free application for federal student aid. That is going to be the financial information that the, your university, the state, and the federal government are going to need in order to allocate you student financial aid. Even if you don't think that you're going to get any financial aid, it is super important to fill this out because not only will it probably make you qualified for financial aid, but it's also how you get qualified for student loans. And it's also how in the UC system, you get scholarships. Yes, there are some scholarships that you have to apply to, but most of the bigger, like mainstream, I guess, scholarships in the UC system is based off of your FAFSA application. So even if you don't think you're going to get anything, please, please, please fill out your FAFSA. Then 
you're also going to be required to upload other kinds of like miscellaneous documentation such as like your health records, your vaccination record, other things that I honestly can't think of right now. But yeah, submitting your intent to register that you're going to like actually enroll to become a student, your transcripts, your financial aid information and like your health records and vaccination documents are really the four things that they're going to ask for, I think like across the board. The next question I got was, what was the hardest part of the transfer process and how did you manage it? It's the essays. If you've seen any of the videos on my channel, you would know that it is my opinion and basically the opinion of anybody else who knows anything about college admissions that the essays are the most important part of the application and they're also the hardest part of the application. Writing the essays is really hard because most of the prompts are super open-ended because they're really like not, they're not testing you, but they do want to see what your thought process is behind answering those prompts, how you answer them, like what topics you choose to talk about, the way you write, like all of the things that go into answering a prompt that really illustrate who you are as a person. And that can be a really difficult process. I mean, for me, I actually went through the application process once in 2018 and got rejected because my essays were that bad. <laughs> like if you don't reach out for any kind of guidance, if you don't look at YouTube videos, if you don't go to the workshops, it can be really difficult to discern what it is these universities are actually asking from you when you go to write your essays. It can also be difficult like emotionally in terms of time management because they're asking you to write these essays. For the UCs, they are due November 30th, which is like towards the end of the semester when things are kind of ramping up, final projects, getting ready for your final exams. So it can be difficult that way, it can be difficult um, like mentally and emotionally because if you're doing it right, you should be talking about things that are very important and personal to you. So it can be kind of cathartic to grapple with some of the topics that you might be discussing. And it can also be difficult in terms of just coming up with a topic to write about, coming up with a creative way to show the universities who you are as a person. It can be, it just, it's all around hard. <laughs> but I mean, that's one of the reasons why I do what I do with Accepted Consulting. I really love getting to help other students write their essays because it can be such a difficult process and it's something that I had to learn through trial and error. But in terms of managing it, I would suggest like starting your essays early, like as soon as the prompts are released. Um, I started my essays, the ones I got accepted at least, in July when they weren't due until November. Really taking the time to sit down and think and brainstorm about what it is you want the universities to know about you and how you're going to convey it. Um, spend time researching, like watch YouTube videos about the writing process, listen to what other people said in their essays to kind of get you started, researching strategies for writing them. And this also leads me into something I want to share with you guys. When I was writing my essay, I did not have these resources except for listening to other people read their essays on YouTube. So I actually made an essay guide on how to write your transfer application essays. It's also applicable to anybody who's applying to undergrad, whether you're applying as a freshman or a transfer. So I'll leave that in the description below as well. You can go to Accepted Consulting and buy it from the shop. And honestly, it's what I needed when I was writing my essays and would have been super helpful had I had it then. I didn't, so it's available now for future transfer students. So yeah, that was definitely, I think, the hardest part of doing the actual, like, writing my transfer application. All right, the next question is, what was your main focus as a transfer to UC Berkeley? I'm not quite sure what this question is asking, so I'm gonna do my best to answer it in a way that I hope makes sense. In my application process, my main focus was writing good essays. <laughs> Having had my essays rejected once before made me really zero in and focus on my essays as something that was going to be super important to me getting in because my previous essays were just like so bad. You can actually go and listen to them. I have them up on my channel just like talking about why they were rejected and why they're bad and how to avoid writing a bad essay like I did. In terms of like trying to transfer to UC Berkeley. I also focused on taking my major prerequisites, so my anthropology classes. I focused on getting better grades because I had gotten a C and an F my first semester of community college, so I focused on trying to improve my GPA. I also focused on getting extracurriculars in my, like, kind of like in the vicinity of my area of interest, so I was like, I was in the Honor Society, and in the Honor Society we did a lot of like campus improvement projects. I was in the Anthropology Club. I did some interning at a museum, which is again like tangentially related to the field of archaeology and museum studies. In terms of like wanting to transfer to UC Berkeley, some of the things that I focused on were the department, and I also focused on what kinds of courses had been offered in the past to kind of get an idea of the types of things, like 
like the types of information I'd be learning once I got to UC Berkeley. I also looked at the faculty members to look at what their areas of interest were, what their research looked like, where they were conducting that research. And I know this is something that I have said many times in this video already, but another thing that I focused on was the fact that it was proximal to my mom's house and also that I liked the Bay Area and like the environment and the weather in the Bay Area is something I could see myself enjoying. So I hope that kind of makes sense. I hope that answers your question. <laughs> the next one is, did you go to community college in California and were there any out of state schools that were an option for me. Yes, I did go to community college in California. I was born and raised in Davis, California. I have never lived anywhere but California. And in fact, moving to Berkeley was one of the first times that I've actually like left the Davis area. So <laughs> so yeah, my, my parents went to school at UC Davis for veterinary school and then never left and had me and my brother and raised us there. So yeah, I started off by going to the Sacramento City College satellite campus which was actually on UC Davis's campus so when I was like a brand new community college student it was kind of fun like going on to UC Davis's campus and being like mm, I'm a college student. Once I had taken all the courses there that I could I had to go to the main campus in Sacramento to take some of the courses that they didn't have offered at the Davis campus. So yes I went to community college in California which is why a lot of my content focuses on the California community college to CSU and UC process and then the second part of that question was were there any out-of-state schools that were an option for me? The answer is no, <laughs> kind of straight up. I didn't even consider applying to out-of-state universities, mostly because in the CC to UC system, we have what is called the transfer admission guarantee, which I talked about previously, which is a transfer agreement saying if you fulfill these certain requirements, you have a guaranteed spot at one of the UCs that participate in this program. And I think all but UC San Diego, UCLA, and UC Berkeley participate in this. So I did my transfer admission guarantee to UC Davis since it was the closest to my mom's house and they had a good anthropology program. Because of that, I didn't feel like it was necessary for me to apply to any of out-of-state universities. I knew I was going to get into a good school regardless. And and also because I do have some of those extenuating circumstances that are that make an out of state school prohibitive to me, such as the cost, you know, going to an in-state university is going to be much cheaper for me. And UC Berkeley also offers amazing financial aid packages. So I'm going to graduate with very minimal debt. Then there's also like being close to my mom and my family because of chronically ill family members. I like to be there to take care of them. Also, my brother and his wife and his kid all live in Davis and I'd like to be close to them. And again, my fiance also lives in Davis and I like to be close to him as well. I could have gone to an out-of-state school, I think, if I wanted to, but there were a lot of reasons to not go to an out-of-state school and I'm very happy with the decision that I made. That being said though, I have helped people with their out-of-state applications, so I am practiced in helping people get into those kinds of universities and those kinds of situations. Really, I help students from like across all of the United States, not just the California Community College to UC system. <laughs> okay, the next question I got is about the essays. It says, how did you come up with your essay content? I mean, how did you choose what to say? This is a great question because the choice of your topic for your essay is actually really important. So when I talk to clients about the essay and the essay structure, the first thing that you should think about is using some kind of personal anecdote that you can use to build a narrative so you can show the universities who you are as a person and how you think rather than telling them. So the first time around when I wrote my essay, I wrote what I call the resume essay, which is where I took all of the things that theoretically make me a good qualified student for transfer, including like my courses and my extracurriculars, and I just kind of wrote it out in paragraph form. This is telling the universities why I think I'm qualified to transfer instead of showing them who I am as a person. When I really sat down to brainstorm and think about what kinds of topics could convey the different facets of my personality. Um, I tried to think about the things that were the most important to me. So the things that were the most important to me at that time were anthropology and archaeology, my wardrobe, my vintage clothing, my aesthetic, <laughs> and then discussing the struggles that I've been through because they were super important to the reasons why I almost failed out of high school and why I chose to go to community college in the first place. So the, the prompt for the first essay asks you to like discuss why it is like what you've done to prepare for your major. What I've done to prepare for my major was become extremely passionate about anthropology, participate in archaeological experiences, join the anthropology club. I zero 
zeroed in on using that personal anecdote of my first archaeological experience to start illustrating that like personal connection that I have to my major, to hook the reader into my essay, and then to expand and reflect upon that experience to illustrate the things that I learned and how it's been applicable to my studies and my future career as a student and archaeologist. Then I also chose to answer the prompt like how do you express your creative side by talking about my fashion and my aesthetic style choices and how they were not only an expression of my own personal creative flair by wearing like vintage outfits and putting to like crafting the perfect mid-century feeling outfit but also how like wearing vintage and utilizing thrifted clothing is an expression of environmentalism at that moment in time vintage was something that i thought a lot about it was a huge part of my life it was literally what i wore on my body every single day so I wanted to talk about that. Then the last two prompts that I, I chose were to discuss skills that you have and to discuss like a, str a struggle that you had to overcome in terms of your academics. So I wanted to talk about my struggles that I've had as a person who has been low income for a long time and a person who has lost a parent because those two things were incredibly impactful. Those two things were huge in me having declining grades throughout my primary education and one of the reasons why I was unable to afford going to university straight from high school. So because those were so important and impactful in my life, I decided that those were two things that definitely needed to be talked about in my short essays for the UC Personal Insight questions. If the angle is a little bit different, I'm sorry, my camera battery died, so I had to replace it and yeah, anyways, moving on. <laughs> the next question is, how did you overcome imposter syndrome? The real answer to this question is I kind of didn't. I started feeling imposter syndrome in community college when I started getting good grades because as somebody who previously had a record of getting really bad grades, getting good grades kind of felt like not real. <laughs> like it felt like it was an accident, it felt like I was doing something to make my professors think I deserved good grades when I didn't. But in terms of like imposter syndrome when it came to actually applying, I think that I am just an incredibly stubborn person and once I get like hyper fixated on something and maybe this is because of my ADHD, I will do that thing regardless <laughs> of how I feel about it, regardless of any like potential barriers getting in my way. So in reality, I kind of didn't. And now that I'm actually at Berkeley, I struggled a lot with imposter syndrome when I first transferred because I think a lot of transfer students kind of struggle with this, with this feeling of like, do I really belong here? Are they going to send me a letter saying like my admission was an accident, so on and so forth. And it can also be really difficult coming from a community college into a place like UC Berkeley where the people who are at this university are there for a reason because they're like incredibly intelligent and they work really hard to be good students. I compare myself to my fellow classmates all the time, especially the ones who are doing really cool research and re like really cool work and producing this amazing like knowledge and stuff like that. And so the answer is I don't really, but I also do try to remind myself when the imposter syndrome gets really bad that it is uh, a tool of the patriarchy meant to make people who are now in the spaces that were not constructed for us feeling as though we don't belong because we very do much belong. We got into these universities for a reason and we are going to do amazing, incredible things there. <laughs> the next question is how much do applications cost? This varies from campus to campus and from state to state and whatever system it is you're looking at, but for the UCs specifically, it is one application that you send to the different campuses and each campus costs $75. However, you can also apply for the fee waiver, which waives the cost of up to four universities. So I myself applied to five universities, which meant I only paid one $75 fee. The next question is, what are some good organization tips to stay on top of assignments at your transfer university? The answer is, I don't. <laughs> if you've seen any of my previous videos, you might know that I have ADHD or attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, and ADHD impacts what is known as the executive functions in the brain. And the executive functions of the brain are things like time management, organization, prioritization, 
initiation, task initiation, so like actually getting up and doing something. So as a person who has ADHD, it is very, very difficult for me to initiate my tasks. It's difficult for me to organize my tasks. It also impacts working memory and memory formation. So I often forget what, what assignments I have and when they're due. I also usually forget like the obligations that I've signed up for, things like meetings and when my classes actually are and that kind of stuff. So personally, I try my best by utilizing a planner. I also use Google Calendar to manage my schedule and I leave it open on my computer and I also have it as a widget on my phone so that when I open my phone I can also like have a visual of what my schedule looks like. I also like obsessively check Canvas. I also use Notion to keep like a big master list of all of my assignments and when they're due. Essentially what I have done is like create a system of like repetition or like backup after backup so that way if one system fails then the other system takes over and reminds me of my assignments. It's not the best system because it doesn't always work, but it's what I do. <laughs> the next question is, um, are there specific transfer programs with specialized requirements? This depends on which university you're applying to, which college within the university you're applying to, and what major you're applying to. It can get really complicated, but for example, let's say you want to apply to the Haas Business School here at UC Berkeley. Haas Business School itself has its own set of requirements aside from the general education requirements, aside from like the general GPA requirements of the university. It has its own set of requirements, and I think that there are even some colleges within this university that also have its own application. So not only do you have to apply to the university, you have to apply to get into that school itself. But that varies between university and major and programs and so on and so forth. In the California Community College system, though, we do have special agree transfer agreements. So like I said, we have the transfer admission guarantee from a California Community College to the UCs. And then there's also the guaranteed transfer from a California Community College to a CSU. Those ones are just like you have to have like the basic general education requirements and the major requirements and the GPA requirements. The next question is, how often should you meet with a counselor? This is kind of up to you. Personally, I only ever met with my counselors a handful of times and I found those meetings to be frustratingly unproductive and unhelpful. The only time I found a meeting with a counselor to actually be helpful was when I met specifically with the transfer counselor at my community college. You can meet with the other like major advisors or just like general counselors at your community college to discuss like general education plans, like what major you might wanna go into and what those requirements look like. But if you are thinking specifically that you need help in the transfer process, then you should seek out specifically a transfer counselor because they're going to have that information and that knowledge available for you. Alternatively, you can also meet with me at Accepted Consulting because one of the services that I offer are things like program searches as well as academic planning where I can help you kind of figure out what educational path to take to reach your transfer goal. Another question says, how did you figure out all of the prerequisites for transferring? This is a great question because this can be really convoluted and difficult to get your hands on. So the first thing that I did was went to my community college's website and looked up how to transfer essentially and I looked for any of the website's pages that talked about the transfer process and transfer requirements. That's how I learned about the IGETC and the IGETC certification. I used the IGETC to then like fulfill my general education requirements and then for your major prerequisites, your community college should have a catalog that discusses which courses that you're going to need to fulfill your major requirements at your community college. And then the other thing you should be doing is looking at the major prerequisites that the university you want to transfer to requires because it might be slightly different from what you're required to take at your community college. So your community college should have a general education and a general major requirement list. Okay, filming this video has become chaotic because I keep getting phone calls, the crows are calling, and my battery died and my SD card just filled up, so <laughs> I am sorry, bear with me. <laughs> so I was saying that your community college should have its major and general education requirements, and then you should also check the university you want to transfer to to see if there are any other courses that you need to supplement with. Additionally, if you're in the California Community College system, I'm not sure if this exists for other systems. I'd have to look. Assist.org is a really helpful website you can go to where you can tell them what community college you're at, what your major is, and what university you want to transfer to. And that website will actually tell you what the requirements are for transfer, what the requirements are
are for your major. That's a resource that you can use to kind of plan what classes you need to take. All right, and the last question we have is what GPA do you need to transfer to a school like Berkeley, Davis, or UCLA? And this is a great question and the answer is it depends. <laughs> Most of the UCs do have a general baseline GPA that you need to meet in order to be qualified for transfer. I know for UC Berkeley and I think UCLA and UC Davis that GPA minimum is a 3.0. However, different majors, different colleges and different universities might have different baseline GPAs. For example, I know that the engineering college here within UC Berkeley requires a 3.5 GPA for transfer students. The best way to go about figuring this out is to go to the university's website and look at what their transfer requirements are. And the other thing I wanted to say about this is that all of these universities have their baseline GPA, but keep in mind that there are like hundreds of thousands of students that are applying to these universities. And so having a higher GPA, while it's not of the utmost importance, it is going to be helpful in making you a more competitive applicant over somebody who is just meeting the baseline GPA. For example, when I applied, I had a 3.87 transferable GPA. Now that's not to say that you can't get in with a baseline 3.0 GPA because you definitely can. And in, in that situation, that's when you want to really focus in on your extracurriculars and your essay and, and really making your essays super strong so the universities know who you are and can and they can tell from your essays that you're more than just your GPA. Something that I do also want to mention is that most of the UCs take a holistic approach to their admissions process so they're not just looking at your GPA they're looking at your GPA and its relationship to your transcript any trends in your transcript so if you started with bad grades but ended with good grades like I did that's something they take into account because it shows growth and development so yeah basically moral of the story GPA is not the most important thing but it is helpful all right well I think that was all of the questions that I had for you guys today thank you so much for leaving me these questions again if you aren't following me over on Instagram you should because I posted daily content there. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment below. Tell me what do you think is the most important part of the transfer process and subscribe for more UC Berkeley vintage transfer and archaeology related content and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!